I'm Patrick King, and you are watching Synthwave Ultra. Combing the blackest depths of dark synths to create something that's not quite synthwave and not quite metal, today's guest is one of the premier names in the darker side of the synthwave scene. With his chainsaw rhythms and brutal beats, his music is guaranteed to get your head banging and your adrenaline racing. Welcome my guest today, Gregorio Franco. How's it going this evening? I'm doing well, how are you? Doing all right. So I guess the, the first thing I was going to ask, so how did, how did you get started in the whole like synth retro thing? Because I mean, I, I know like you do like, you know, you're primarily like more the, like the dark, uh, the dark synth um, metal aspect, aspect of it. But, like how did you get into like synth specifically? Well, um, to be honest with you, I originally wanted to start a dungeon synth project. Okay. I I didn't want to uh, necessarily make something that sounded like like synth or any synthwave or anything like that, but uh, it evolved into that over time because I started to I started to want to make soundtracks for movies that didn't exist, you know, like with the whole stalker thing, and then the second album about like the whole like city crime thing, and it evolved away from that pretty quickly. But that was kind of the start of it around 2012, 2013. Nice. Yeah, because that's it. I mean, that, that's definitely definitely something I've seen in your discography is that, is that yeah, like you have you have a, a lot of like, I mean, I mean, like you said, basically like soundtracks for like old style like slasher movies that, you know, that don't exist, but like you have these badass soundtracks for them. I appreciate that. Yeah. Wait, um, so so what are, what are your big influences and inspirations? As far as just musically or... Uh... Yeah, just I mean, musically and also and also I mean, just like you know, for anything else, I mean, just like you know, what inspires you as an artist? A lot of different stuff that that kind of comes together to inspire it. A lot of it comes from metal mm -hmm. and uh, and hardcore because I have a pretty big background in that. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Uh, yeah, a lot of it comes from that, and a lot of it comes from film composers and stuff too. Uh, a lot of it comes from from soundtracks specifically stuff from 70s and 80s that kind of mm -hmm. thing like italian horror uh some of the old carpenter stuff of course you know i've got a lot of the same answers as a lot of a lot of people yeah. when it comes to that kind of thing and because 80s synthesizers just vibe with people man like the, so the sounds and the styles that they can make even if it's you know even if it's not like an original instrument even if it's just like a vst or something that 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 still fives to people people can hear that and you can say that is a dx7 and that's what that's supposed to sound like mm -hmm. and people vibe with that and i'm into it yeah yeah for sure i mean like i've, I've definitely seen people discussing that on you know on, on twitter and instagram where like they're, they're talking about like their specific setups and equipment and and yeah i mean i know that's the whole thing is that different synths have, have their different specific sounds so like that, that's really cool just to you know to, to be able to have to have develop an ear for that and really be able to identify them definitely, definitely. um are there, are there are there any specific like i mean you mentioned like 70s and 80s uh soundtracks like were there any specific composers who who like uh especially influence you goblin in particular yeah. uh goblin and fabio Fritzi. um well goblin did the soundtrack for you know Dawn of the Dead and Suspiria and stuff like that. So that's a big influence, even though it doesn't really, even though it doesn't really sound like a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. That I think that they are the most unique as far as soundtrack go, especially for the time. And you can pick that stuff out of a lineup any day of the week. I'm like you know, this this definitely sounds like Goblin, or you know, this definitely sounds like Fritzy, or this definitely sounds like John Carpenter. You know, like this. Mm -hmm. They have a they have a thing they have a theme that they go with and it don't necessarily change it of course things change with time but you can always tell uh when a soundtrack is made by goblin or tangerine dream for that matter when they did yeah. those pieces for feet uh and uh when did Heat come out was that like 94 or 95 something like that i don't remember anyway that that soundtrack too is amazing it's just very like incidental very soundscapey and i don't think it was all tangerine dream but uh, the parts of it that were them I, it was pretty rad too nice 
Yeah, yeah, because uh, I mean that's I mean, that's the thing too. I guess like when a lot of people think of like synth soundtrack, they maybe just think of like you know Evangelist and uh, Blade Runner and stuff like that. But yeah, that's interesting how you're saying like Italian horror. I mean, like <laughs> whenever I think of Italian horror, like immediately the first thing I think of is Suspiria, just because that just it's just so unique and so stylish. And a big part mm-hmm. of that is is uh, the the music that just helps create this just very just this very specific atmosphere. I feel like that like it has like a very specific tone to it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing with a lot of those old horror soundtracks. People recognize the film, of course, but more often than not, they recognize the themes from those films even more. Like Halloween, like that everyone knows what that sounds like. Oh, yeah, of course. Even if they haven't seen Halloween. Music is such a defining part of the culture of that time period that, yeah, even if you haven't seen that, if you listen to, you know, like the Halloween theme or if you listen to like the theme from oh i don't know exorcist or something like that everybody knows what that sounds like before you even go like oh this is from that movie like they already know you know music has such a way of defining and connecting people like that yeah most definitely i mean i know that i mean that's i know for for me personally that's one of the big reasons why i've I've gotten so much into um into like the whole synth retro thing is, is yeah like it's I mean, obviously, there's just a tons, tons, and tons of genres. I mean, somebody like you who does like more like the darker metal influence stuff is going to be different than like the Midnight or or like FM84 or something like that. But it's just cool, just because it. I feel like it really evokes a certain a certain mood. And in your case, like it, you know, like it, it's a very dark, like horror themed mood. Which, yeah, that's 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 really cool. <laughs> I appreciate that. I, uh, that's kind of what I try to do because I don't. Um, I'll never even go with lyrics or writing lyrics or doing vocals or anything like that, except for, you know, when it's a cover, I guess I do that once in a while, but the music is always how I, how I talk to people. Mm -hmm. So, and it's usually however I'm feeling at the time. And uh, that's why I had that whole thing where I just made the band camp with all the different projects on it. Cause like, sometimes I feel like making dungeon synth that sounds like it was made on the Atari or Sometimes I feel like making metal or sometimes I feel like this or that or whatever. So Mm -hmm. different projects for different moods. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I was uh, I was going through that earlier and I saw how like you have some stuff that's like Norwegian black metal and and you have some stuff that you said that's more like kind of ambient and like not not specifically like synthy, but still like like more like an ambient soundscapes and and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Um, So it's one thing I've seen that you do fairly regularly on Bandcamp is you'll do um, these like the you'll do like basically like, like big tribute albums and like like big uh, like full on sound uh, soundtrack covers like I remember you did one for Chrono Trigger which is mm-hmm. awesome just because like I love the Chrono Trigger soundtrack I mean it's one of my favorite games of all time ah, yeah like, that's like so that, good yeah like that's that's like just, 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 just like that is really cool and really inspiring just like it's it's really interesting seeing such a unique take on that um, I really appreciate that because. That stuff was, that was a lot of work putting that stuff together and just taking all the different songs apart and putting them back together and and uh, and I guess I guess my style I don't know even though a lot of it was a lot of it I tried to keep it to the original stuff like if it sounded orchestral then I'll just make it orchestral but if a part sounded like it was supposed to be heavy then I'll just make it heavy mm-hmm. and try to try to bring it to wherever wherever I needed it to be brought at the particular time. Like some of the stuff is just chill. Like like there's the sewer one that's that's chill. And it's got mm-hmm. like this like water sound behind it. It's got like I think there's like a harpsichord in it or something. I don't know. And then there's and then there's like the battle with Lavo where it's just like constant just Oh yeah. And that that it has a vibe to it and I wanted it to have like a heavy vibe, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean I mean you 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 pulled that off really well because yeah like i mean i, I can see t you have that in the in your um in the background there you have that Mega Man poster it's just like it, you can definitely see that that uh, just like the, the the classic games influence in in your stuff like you said like with 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 chrono trigger and like i like i think you, you did a final fantasy uh, final fantasy one too if i recall i did seven and six nice oh yeah the you know the the, the best ones uh, oh, <laughs> that that's debatable. That's we could start a whole other chat show about that. But I don't know if we want to go there. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm biased because those are those are the main ones that I played. But we're really good, and uh, and um, I think that uh, 
my original decision to do seven first was because I think that's one of the most recognized soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, you know, a lot of people already know about Final Fantasy seven. I think it was one of the most popular ones. Not necessarily everyone's favorite, but it was one of the most popular ones. I think it like sold some of the most or something like that. But six has there's a funny thing about those soundtracks too, because there's some songs on on the six soundtrack that sound like they could have gone in seven. Really? And I did a little bit of research about it, and it turns out that Uematsu actually had like he Aerith's theme from Final Fantasy Seven was a continuation of another theme that he started in Final Fantasy VI. Interesting, uh, that that's cool. Kind of sounded similar to it, but he was like, I don't really know how to finish this. And then he, but he still put it in the game. And then next in Aerith's theme, he finished that theme. So there's two themes that sound almost exactly alike. Mm -hmm. One of them is for one person in six and another one is for Aerith in seven. So. Fascinating. Yeah, because I do, I mean, it's been ages since, since I played six, but I do remember because like, because I, I thought, I mean, I guess obviously that was the last one that was on Super Nintendo. But I remember like it, it did, it did have that really grand, like huge feel that 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 Seven does, just because it has such a, a huge world and like there's like the the, the big split halfway through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but yeah, like that's that's that, that, that's really fascinating. Now I need to. It's got to, more to go music in it too. That. It's got more more music in it too than Seven does. Wow. I think <laughs> there's like ten or fifteen more tracks on the six soundtrack than there is on seven. And I didn't do them all. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's Selected it. works for a reason. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I remember like when we did the, the Chrono Trigger one and the Final Fantasy seven one, I was going through, I'm like, holy shit, he did, he did a lot of these. Yeah. And I wanted to do more of them, Some, but some of them I felt like I just, either I couldn't do them justice or I didn't feel like they belonged in the album or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It was just a personal preference. It was like, some of it was like, I don't know if I feel like doing this one. I'm already doing a lot of these. Maybe not do every single one of them, you know, because I'm sure other people have done exhaustive rework. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, how many, you know, how many versions of the of the Genova theme can they, you, know, do you think are out there? Yeah, that's know? the thing. Like, yeah, how many how many versions of that are one winged angel or you know, Terra's theme? You mm -hmm. know, like how many of those? Or even there was one uh, on the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. I think it was. Shala's theme or Scala, however you say it. Yeah, that one's been remixed a bunch of times too. But I decided to put it in there just because the track is awesome. Oh it's yeah, a badass! It's a badass track. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny too because I, geez, I remember years and years ago. I remember it was it was it some I think it was like some like game hobby store thing. I remember my my brother and I found um, it was a Chrono Trigger soundtrack, but it was all like jazz arrangements. And like it was really it was really cool yeah like there, and even then there was there was like kind of like acid jazz and more just kind of like you know like regular like kind of like classic miles davis style jazz but yeah it was it's just kind of going back to where we were saying earlier like it's so interesting seeing just the, these different takes on these iconic uh works like that then mm -hmm. and i've heard some some jazz stuff some of the chrono trigger jazz stuff is really cool but then, but then again there's like a lot of people on youtube and beyond doing all that stuff doing these remixes and things like that so Mm -hmm. There's a lot out there. Yeah. Well, um, I, I guess kind of, kind of going into the the uh, metal end of stuff. So uh, when it, when you released it, Agony recently, I remember listening to that and I'm like, this is just like a straight up death metal album. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's kind of what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to make it just I just wanted to make a metal album. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. That was the vibe. Yeah. Um, but a metal album without a band or instruments or anything, because it's all synthesized. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, everything on Agony is synthesis. It's no uh, real instruments, I guess. Yeah, that's, gee, that, that makes it even even more impressive. Because, yeah, I mean, like I said, like I'm, I'm listening to it. Like, this sounds, because, I mean, I, I, I listen to, you know, a fair amount of death metal, you know, like a, a Monomar, Death Clock, the Legion, stuff like that. And, like, it felt like it's like, wouldn't be at, at, at a place of that. So that's yeah, that's that's really that's really impressive. The fact that it, that that's all synthesized, like that's really cool. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just my own personal uh, cocktail of synthesizers and effects and things like that, kind of all put together in a mush to make that weird distorted sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's funny too. So on on like on uh, Spotify, so I have 
three three main playlists I have that I you know keep uh, maintain. So I've got my my big synth wave one, obviously. Then I have my hell synth uh, offshoot one that's just all dark synth stuff. And then I have a metal one that's so all like death metal, power metal, like British heavy metal stuff like that. And like I remember when Agony came out, I'm like yep, this belongs on all three of these. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool that uh, that sometimes it feels like it it could be on one playlist, and sometimes it could feel like it could be on another one. Mm. You know, it's it's nice to it's nice to be able to have that kind of vibe where like sometimes if you want to listen to one thing and you put that on but if you want to listen to something else you can put something else on but i feel like a lot of my catalog has that like it, it changes a lot and there's there's lots of stuff that would fit on like uh oh, i don't know just like a like a retro synth playlist or something and then there's stuff that you know sounds like a unreleased bolt thrower track or something mm-hmm and I yeah, kind of like so, that. Yeah, yeah. So with uh, like, like kind of keeping with the metal themes, like who were who were some of your your big influences uh, on that? Well, uh, I think recently a lot of it has to go to Bolt Thrower for okay. their uh, for a couple of their records, specifically uh, for Victory and uh, oh. uh, War Master. Um, battle there is no law in battle there is no law all that old all the old gross shit <laughs> and then uh, and then you got uh, really like really like the older carcass stuff um, and as far as newer stuff there's a band called Black Breath that was really good that started making music uh, it's like 2010 20, like 10 years ago or something like that they had a they had a really big like uh, entombed hm2 vibe going with them and I, I like older entombed stuff too um and they're really good and i like gate creeper a lot it's really heavy it's good music to work out too oh, yeah. it's like one of those just heavy knuckle dragon neanderthal bunch bunch music it's <laughs> it's rad i love it <laughs> yeah I, I love it That's it's awesome. good music like when you're angry and you need to like let off steam Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I remember, you know, when I was 15, 16 years old, and you know, like as as with anybody, like you're just angsty and pissed off at everything. And like, I remember putting on Master of Puppets for the first time. And I'm like, yeah, this is my vibe. I felt that way with Ride the Lightning, nice. actually. Yep. yep, I did the same thing, putting on putting Ride the Lightning on on, on a CD player and just feeling sad for myself. <laughs> just just a fade of black on on repeat. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Man, my mom will let me order like rent this video at Blockbuster. I'm really sad about it. Just put it... <laughs> I'm like 12. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see what next. So yeah. Um, oh yeah. So I know, so I know like obviously with with uh, COVID and everything like that, like it's, it's, it's kind of put, you know, kind of kind of killed live, live music for now. But what's cool is that in uh, at least like with uh, the the synth scene they're, they're they've been doing some virtual shows so like i know you, you did one of the the synth valley shows in the last few months so mm -hmm. uh how have how have uh, those been going like have you been going about doing that well that stuff is uh that's really the only one that i did um but i did do one also for another project for one of my dungeon set projects i did one of like the dungeon siege live streams and that was really cool too but that was that was a little bit earlier. I think that was like in 2020. Um, so that was probably about a year ago now or something like that. But uh, um, that's really the only one that I've been that I've done aside from that. Um, and I haven't. Uh, I'd be open to do more. I don't know if I think I have to check my email. I don't know if I've been asked to do any other ones, but uh, I would definitely be down to do more like the live stuff, like the live. Uh, live however you call it on streaming or something like that i would totally do that mm -hmm. uh, as far as real live stuff goes i don't know because i don't think anybody knows with that it's starting to happen a little bit here and there but uh okay. we'll see if it's safe then yeah uh, then it can be a discussion mm -hmm. yeah because it all and because because you're in atlanta right mm-hmm yeah, so like I, I know there's was it the the terminus? I think like the terminus retro fest or something like that. I think like yeah, there's um, rampant stuff up there. Yeah, Matt, uh, watch out for snakes. He mm -hmm. has started terminus retro wave pretty much on his own and oh, is cool. the uh, 
is pretty much spearheading this new like event scene and uh, the first show they did was really great it was like a outdoor venue you know social distancing mass require that kind of thing um and they did their best to keep everybody safe up there um and i think the next one that they're having is with primo yeah, yeah that's gonna be i think that's next week um i don't know i don't want to date myself in the video <laughs> i think that's i think that's this partic particular time uh i don't know i think that's pretty soon too and then he's got some other stuff lined up and as long as people are being safe and being smart about it then something like that can continue for sure nice yeah i didn't realize he was he was the one doing that because yeah i got and i know he's he's down down in the atlanta area as well i know he's been mm -hmm. yeah but yeah that's that's cool i didn't know he's behind yeah that. he's uh he's put a lot of work in determinus and he's put a lot of blood sweat and tears into it and i think that he deserves a lot of credit for pulling all that stuff together he's doing a really good thing for atlanta yeah that's a, that's great because yeah for me, i mean like uh, obviously I, I know there's there's uh you guys but like i'm like see, it seems like there, there's at least a handful of other synth artists in the the in atlanta or at least in the atlanta area right pretty sure um I, i'm not super up to date on all the local musicians and stuff, I know that there's that there's a uh, there's new artists coming out all the time, mm -hmm. and that's like one of the cool things about working in this scene is that there's always someone new. Because yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Anybody with a anybody with a computer and a keyboard can start making music, and I think that's pretty awesome. Even if you don't have a keyboard, just get a computer. But uh, I think that's rad. But I, I'm not sure. I think uh, who else is from Atlanta right now? Oh well, of course there's Vampire Stepdad. Oh yeah, he's from Atlanta too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's he's a he's a, a lot of fun. Like I, I like how, how he does like you know this old old TV show soundtracks like in that style. Mm. Yeah, don't just don't get him going about the Golden Girls because <laughs> or or Murder She Wrote. Cause he'll just he'll talk your ear off about Murder She Wrote, but that's fine because I love Murder She Wrote. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's good stuff. No, nah, he's a great guy. I I miss hanging out with everybody. You know, when we did the we did the Echo Synthetic Fest and stuff like that, and just generally meeting up with people, I kind of miss it. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can't really do much about it now, but because yeah. it is what it is, especially with our uh, our new friend Delta. But ah, uh, oh, jeez, it yeah. is what it is, man. As, as long as everyone keeps safe and uh, follows whatever rules make the most sense. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll probably get back to at least doing live stuff. I, well, I know that they're, I know that Terminus is doing live stuff already too, and other bars and stuff around here are doing the thing. But I just want people to stay safe, most of all. Like I, the the music is not as important as as your life or your yeah. health. So you can you can stay just as safe at home, jamming out in your underwear, as you would go into a bar. Uh, you know, I just want people to be safe. That's all. Be yeah, safe and enjoy the music. That's all I care about. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's because yeah, because like you said too, like like you, it would it would be awful if, the, if it's like oh yeah, you know, like here's here's some big big exciting music fest. And it's like oh, whoops, it's a super spreader event. Yeah, yeah, and again, like I, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert on any of that stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I, I don't have a degree in whatever whatever science you need to understand viruses things like that i don't have the necessary know-how i just i just do whatever i can do you know like i and that's all i can do yeah yeah and i hope that just, everybody else does the same yeah exactly just you know common sense and a little little empathy go, go a long way yeah yeah definitely well well i uh, i guess to, um so i i I know, yeah. You you post on on Twitter pretty regularly with your uh, Warhammer figurines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, those That's are, my uh, my paint stuff is right behind me now, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Those are the, those are really cool. I mean, I, I just just like seeing, seeing seeing like how much work and detail you you put into this is always really impressive. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's really tiny. <laughs> it's really tiny stuff. I have this, I have this light with uh, this light actually had it looks like one of those ring lights like for uh, social media and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's got a magnifying glass in the middle. So you can like lean into it and you can have like your figure up here and you have the light around it. So it lights it up 
and it kind of magnifies it a little bit so it's easier to work on. But yeah, that shit takes forever. Yeah. For it to look good, yeah, it takes a long time to like do all the like base coating and shading and highlights and edge highlights and recoding and there's a lot to it. That I, and that could be another YouTube chat show. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there already is a few. Oh yeah, YouTube is a it's a great source for for learning how to do Warhammer. That's a lot of fun. It's a good it's a good pastime to chill. It's very calming and focusing doing that kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure like just like doing doing just like, like the very meticulous details like that. I'm sure it's very meditative. Mm-hmm. It is meditative. It can be stressful, but more more often than not, it's more meditative and, and centering. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh, cool. Well, um let's see. Right, well, I believe it looks like that's that's, that's about all, all I got. Was was there anything else you want to add, or you know, anything you want to promote or plug or anything like that? Well, uh, not necessarily. Uh, I'm always working on new stuff, and you never really know. And I don't necessarily even know when uh, when I'll make a new project or a new song or a new album or anything like that. Uh, there is a new Franco album in the works. There's, I think there's actually two or three separate albums that are currently in the works all at the same time right now. And there's there's three or four other projects that are also in the works at this time. So I don't know what's going to come out first. And I don't know when it's going to come out, but think are happening for sure. Wow. So just stay in touch and just stay safe. That's all I would say. All right, cool. Well, look, I'm looking forward to that. It's, you know, looking for, forward to more synthesized brutality yeah you'll definitely have it and thank you so much for having me on this interview today yeah of course thank you thank you for joining me um yeah well i guess that i guess that's it so i'll let you go and so have it have yourself a great evening and we'll we'll talk to you soon all right thank you you do the same yeah, cool bye thanks for watching make sure to follow gregorio franco on twitter instagram and facebook and check him out on Bandcamp, Spotify, and other streaming services online. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below and subscribe to this channel for more great Synthroid conversations. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at, at Patrick King Art and check out the Synthwave Ultra playlist on Spotify for loads of Synthwave from across the spectrum. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Synthwave Ultra.